Assalamualaikum. Hello, my dear students. How are you all? I hope you are doing very well. Um, so, um, welcome to my biology class. I'm your biology teacher, M. D. Jaidul Hasan, and you know the short form of my name is M. Z. N. Today we are going to talk about um, the cellular respiration and the first two steps of cellular respiration. That means the glycolysis and the conversion of pyruvate to acetyl CoA. Okay, and all these uh, topics, all these informations actually belongs to the chapter plant physiology. Okay, let's start. So, uh, at the very beginning, you need to know what is cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is the process by which glucose is broken down to release energy from making ATP, another form of chemical energy. The ATP, this is also called the biological currency, and uh, the full form of ATP is adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so... Um, here yeah, this one this is the chemical reaction of cellular respiration okay uh, one molecule of glucose the sugar here the sugar means glucose c6h12o6 one molecule of glucose when they react with the six molecule of oxygen and this reactants then produce um, six molecule of carbon dioxide six molecule of water and also uh, the atp okay and there are so many um, enzymes and coenzymes and cofactors are also um, actually catalyze this reaction okay so the big question is uh, do only animals respire or do plants respire too okay so um, uh, only plants perform photosynthesis then uh, actually uh, only plants perform photosynthesis and plants and animals they perform cellular respiration but both but actually uh, plants can um, actually perform photosynthesis but plants and animals uh, both of them they perform cellular respiration how uh, so uh, this is undeniable you know that uh, plants produce glucose by photosynthesis so uh, um, they can respire because you know all you already uh, um, learned the definition of cellular respiration cellular respiration is the process by which glucose is broken down and release atp so plants can plant can respire because they have glucose they produce their own glucose uh, through photosynthesis but uh, what about animals actually animals are uh, not able to perform photosynthesis that's why animals do not produce glucose uh, but uh, they have to respire so how is it possible okay listen carefully the idea of cellular res cellular respiration is very simple that we eat food and we the animals we human uh, all um, of uh, the organ living organisms uh, rather than plant uh, who are not able to photosynthesize their glucose um, they um, eat food and then uh, the part of, of the food and the fragments of that food uh, after the digestion in the digestive tract and it converted into three main macromolecules carbohydrates turns into glucose or monosaccharides uh, proteins uh, it turns into amino acids and lipids uh, it turns into um, fatty acid and glycerol okay so and then all these food particles reaches to the cell and inside the cell all those food particles start uh, breaking down okay and then it produce energy because these molecules contain energy okay so we take this food break them down and then we utilize the energy okay so the idea of cellular respiration is to utilize all those food molecules to produce energy inside the cell okay this is the idea of cellular respiration this is the main theme of the cellular respiration so though this topic belongs to the chapter plant physiology but the interesting thing is all the organisms um, plant animals microorganisms they have to respire so this topic that means the cellular respiration and then um, it uh, its process uh, like glycolysis acetyl coa Krebs cycle electron transport chain all things are uh, common all things are applicable for both the animals and plants okay so uh, 
uh, there are two types of cellular respiration okay mm, basis on the requirements of oxygen uh, we can divide the cellular respiration into two types the aerobic res uh, respiration and another one is the anaerobic respiration so in aerobic respiration is a type of respiration which is carried on in the presence of oxygen okay so uh, oxygen is must here by which the oxygen is obtained from the air or from the water okay so and this oxygen here it reacts with the glucose and then it produces carbon dioxide and also the water and the target molecule that means the energy okay the another type of cellular respiration is the anaerobic respiration okay so uh, Mm, anaerobic respiration is the just uh, the opposite of aerobic respiration that means uh, mm, uh, uh, absence of in absence of oxygen this type of respiration occurs okay you see there is no oxygen here uh, that can react with the glucose so uh, in the absence of oxygen glucose produce lactic acid plus energy another type of anaerobic, anaerobic respiration reaction is glucose it converted to um, ethanol okay so i will uh, describe all of this respiration in more details uh, in this lecture okay now um, what are the steps of cellular respirations okay so um, usually a uh, cellular respiration has uh, three major steps uh, the glycolysis and then Krebs cycle and then electron transport system or electron transport chain okay so um, let's talk about the glycolysis first glycolysis is the earliest discovered and the most important process of carbohydrate metabolisms okay so what is glycolysis actually um, glycolysis is a greek word okay um, here the glycose means glucose and the lysis means degradation or splitting so the glycolysis is a metabolic pathway in which glucose is transformed to pyruvate with production of a small amount of energy in the form of atp or nadh okay so all mm, so in this glycolysis uh, pathway glucose turns into pyruvate and it produces atp and nadh as a form of energy okay so and the glycolysis is an anaerobic process so that means it does not require any types of oxygen so glycolysis pathway is used by anaerobic as well as the aerobic organism okay listen carefully glycolysis is an anaerobic process but this process is used by both the anaerobic and aerobic organisms because the aerobic and anaerobic uh, actually glycolysis is the uh, actually the glycolysis is the first phase of cellular respiration for both the aerobic and anaerobic respiration okay so uh, in glycolysis one molecule of glucose is converted into two molecules of pyruvate okay two molecules of pyruvate in eukaryotic cells and this glycolysis actually it takes place in the cytosol that means the cytoplasm of the cell okay here these are the 10 reactions of the glycolysis so the first molecule is glycolysis uh, they had the first molecule of the um, glycolysis pathway is the glucose okay then all through all these steps it transformed into pyruvate okay one molecule of glucose it transformed into two molecules of pyruvate okay and we can divide uh, all these 10 reactions into three phase or three stages into three stages i uh, have the first stage is the um, is the phosphorylation of glucose stage in this stage glucose phosphorylated and transformed into the fructose 1 6 bisphosphate and in the second stage this fructose 1 6 bisphosphate um, it produce two triose okay here the six carbon uh, fructose fructose 1 6 bisphosphate it turns into two triose in this stage and in the third stage um, in this stage actually this is the um, stage of formation of pyruvate here yeah, the pyruvate and also uh, in this stage uh, it, uh, we, uh, we will uh, get four atps and here in the first stage we have to um, utilize two atps okay okay i will uh, mm, from this point mm, 
of my lecture uh, from this point of my lecture please students my students listen carefully with your full concentration and attention okay so glycolysis glycolysis has 10 enzyme catalyzed steps okay each chemical reaction prepares a substrate for the next step in the process okay the first one so at the first enzyme that catalyze the first reaction of glycolysis is called hexokinase okay what hexokinase so here is the first reaction of the glycolysis so mm, i think let's see the whole pathway again mm, i have to tell you something see here see the whole pathway and see here all the enzymes see here all the enzymes hexokinase phosphoglucosomerase phosphofructokinase all the enzymes they have a similarity they have a same suffix in their name and what is what it is uh, here see hexokinase phosphoglucosomerase phosphofructokinase so all these enzymes have a common suffix and this is ase so so when you get ase as suffix that means this is the name of an enzyme okay so okay let's go to the first step here is the hexokinase hexokinase okay so okay mm, the first enzyme is hexokinase here it converts the glucose into glucose 6-phosphate that means a phosphate here the extra molecule is the phosphate that means mm, phosphorylation occurs here phosphorylation means the addition of phosphate okay so now let's look at the enzyme name again and this is hexokinase okay so here the uh, hexo means six but here the hexo means hexo means six and kinase actually is a kind of enzyme that catalyzes the transfer of phosphate group from high energy phosphate donating molecules to a specific substrate okay so more simply uh, it catalyzes the phosphorylation or the dephosphorylation reaction phosphorylation means the addition of phosphate molecule and the dephosphorylation means the removal of phosphate molecule okay so the conversion of atp to adp or the vice versa that means the adp to atp uh, occurs by this kinase enzyme okay here the ATP means the adenosine triphosphate that means it has three phosphate and the ADP means adenosine diphosphate okay that means it has two phosphate okay so when one phosphate transferred from ATP to any substrate it becomes ADP see here the ATP when it when one phosphate transferred from this ATP to another substrate like here this one when you, uh, one atp one phosphate is transferred from atp to here then it this atp converts into adp okay that because two phosphate diphosphate okay and it has three phosphate triphosphate okay so uh, one phosphate transform any substrate adp and makes it atp you have to mention so in this case uh, mm, or when you see this type of scenario you have to mention the enzyme kinase so here the phosphorylation of glucose occurs glucose converts into glucose 6 phosphate okay and this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme hexokinase uh, mm, there are four kinase enzyme in the glycolysis uh, steps 1 3 7 and 10 and all four kinases requires the magnesium ion and have a similar mechanism um, also requires this magnesium ion magnesium ion here the cofactor of this enzyme okay that means it this magnesium ion it helps the hexokinase enzymes to catalyze this reaction to catalyze this phosphorylation okay here
okay so now the second step of the glycolysis and this one is uh, catalyzed by the enzyme glucose 6 phosphate isomerase see here the glucose 6 phosphate um, then so at the very first uh, the glucose it converts into glucose 6 phosphate and then the glucose 6 phosphate in converts into the fructose 6 phosphate okay so and this enzyme and this reaction um, is uh, catalyzed by the enzyme glucose 6 phosphate isomerase okay mm, see here the glucose 6 phosphate this is the uh, l dose and here the fructose 6 phosphate and this is the ketose so that means the glucose 6 phosphate and fructose 6 phosphate are the isomer okay they have isomer do you know what is isomer isomer actually isomer means they have same chemical formulas uh, but different arrangement of atoms okay so so glucose 6 phosphate and fructose 6 phosphate actually they have the same chemical formula c6 h12o6 uh, phosphate okay so uh, but uh, they have different arrangements of uh, atoms okay so that's why the enzyme name is here the enzyme name is isomerase because the isomerase enzyme is a kind of enzyme that converts the one isomer to another okay so here this one is the ring structure of glucose 6 phosphate and this one is the chain form of the glucose um, 6 phosphate and this one is the fructose 6 phosphate chain form and this is the fructose 6 phosphate ring form okay okay now in the third step uh, this fructose 6 phosphate then it converts into fructose 1 6 bisphosphate okay so here the bis means 2 so another phosphorylation occurs here that means fructose 6 phosphate it has a single phosphate but fructose 1 6 bisphosphate um, it has two phosphate okay that's why mm, this is called the fructose 1 6 bisphosphate okay and this uh, reaction catalyzed by the enzyme phosphofructokinase okay so the enzyme is kinase why uh, because uh, phosphorylation occurs here so one phosphate from the atp it transfer to the fructose 1 6 bisphosphate sorry fructose uh, um, 6 phosphate and then make it fructose 1 6 bisphosphate okay so one phosphate from this atp it uh, then uh, transferred here and then it becomes fructose 1 6 bisphosphate and the atp it uh, becomes adp okay so that's why the enzyme name is kinase and here the molecule is for fructose phosphate that's why phosphofructokinase okay okay now uh, this is the fourth step and this is catalyzed by the enzyme aldolase aldolase uh, enzyme it cleaves the uh, six molecule uh, six carbon uh, it, uh, six carbon molecule fructose one six bisphosphate uh, into two three carbon molecules mm, one is dihydroxyacetone phosphate and another one is the glyceraldehyde three phosphate okay see here the six carbon and two phosphate first one is here and another one is here so and see here in the dihydroxyacetone phosphate it has three carbon and a phosphate and the glyceraldehyde three phosphate it has three carbon and a single phosphate so this one is the LD, uh, acid, uh, ketone ketone is it? acetone ketone group and this one is the aldehyde here the aldehyde functional group okay so um, this enzyme so this uh, reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme aldolase okay now this is, the, this is an interesting step in this step this dihydroxyacetone phosphate here this dihydroxyacetone phosphate uh, it turns into the glycerol 3 phosphate because the subsequent reactions of the glycolysis can only utilize this glycerol 3 phosphate okay so that's why um, in this stage uh, uh, that means in this stage actually we have uh, two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate one from directly one is from directly from the fructose 1 6 bis phosphate here and another one is from the this dihydroxy acetone phosphate okay so from one molecule of glucose now we have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate okay and see here the enzyme is 
isomerase because this dihydroxy oxygen phosphate and glycerylate three phosphate they are isomer okay they have same chemical formula just different atom arrangements okay and the molecule is uh, has a three carbon and has a phosphate that's why the enzyme name is triose phosphate isomerase the tri means three okay triose phosphate isomerase okay now let's talk about the um, step six and which is catalyzed by the enzyme glycerol layer three phosphate dehydrogenase okay so in this stage here actually um, glycerol layer three phosphate it converts into one three bisphosphoglycerate okay here actually two phenomenon occurs here okay one is hydrogen transfer from glycerol dehyde uh, three phosphate to NAD plus, then the NAD plus uh, reduced to NADH, NADH plus H plus, and glycerol D three phosphate. Mm. Okay, uh, listen again. Actually, here uh, two phenomena occurs. Okay, one is hydrogen transfer. Hydrogen transfer from this glycerol D three phosphate. Mm, and then uh, after uh, receiving the, that hydrogen NAD plus it reduced to NADH plus H plus and another thing is uh, phosphorylation here also the phosphorylation occurs here the uh, phosphorylation means you know the um, addition of phosphorus so here this here this inorganic phosphate um, when it uh, adds here it turns into this glycerol that three phosphate it converts into one three bisphosphoglycerate okay mm, that's why mm, this enzyme name is dehydrogenase okay so mm, what is dehydrogenase d means the remove okay d means remove and hydrogenase at the hydrogenase hydrogen means hydrogen so the hydrogen remove mm, in this reaction hydrogen removed mm, from this glycerol dehyde three phosphate that's why mm, the enzyme name is glycerol dehyde three phosphate dehydrogenase okay okay now the seven seventh step and uh, which is catalyzed by the phosphoglycerate kinase mm, which is mm, so in this step actually one three bisphosphoglycerate it converts into three phosphoglycerate okay and see here the enzyme is phosphoglycerate kinase and you know why the, uh, when the enzyme kinase uh, actually uh, catalyze the reaction when the phosphorylation or dephosphorylation occurs okay so um, here the um, see one phosphate from one three bisphosphoglycerate transferred to ADP so uh, this uh, mm, so the dephosphorylation of one three bisphosphoglycerate uh, occurs as a result three phosphoglycerate and ATP produced and now the um, in this stage uh, it catalyzed by the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase okay so uh, mm, that means uh, see here the three phosphoglycerate it converts into two phosphoglycerate that's the uh, phosphate molecules uh, actually it transferred from the uh, three uh, number three carbon to number two carbon and that means and uh, you can call it the mutation so mutation happens here okay so that's why the enzyme is called the mutase phosphoglycerate mutase and in this reaction um, no atp or no energy is required for this uh, phosphate transform transformation okay and now the ninth step and uh, this stage uh, the enzyme name is enolase and this in, in this stage two phosphoglycerate it then mm, turns into phosphoenone you know, the two phosphoglycerate and in the uh, after dehydration dehydration means uh, releasing uh, water molecule and after the, the dehydration the two phosphoglycerate molecule it turns into the phosphoenol pyruvate okay and this uh, 
phosphoenol pyruvate this phosphoenol pyruvate has a very high phosphoryl group transfer potential uh, because it exists in its unstable enol form here this enol form here the enol form enol group uh, here the enol uh, functional group is very unstable okay uh, now the last step of the glycolysis is the man uh, which is catalyzed by the enzyme pyruvate kinase see here the phosphoenol pyruvate um, uh, it uh, is very unstable here the enol pyruvate that's why uh, very uh, um, uh, rapidly this phosphoenol pyruvate it turns into pyruvate by the enzyme pyruvate kinase okay and this is a metabolically irreversible uh, reaction and here uh, mm, so we found we um, get our target product of the glycolysis that means the pyruvate okay so uh, and um, See here the phosphate of the phosphoenol pyruvate, uh, which is transferred to the ADP. Then, uh, as a result, this ADP, ADP it converts into ATP, and that's why um, because of this phosphorylation and dephosphorylation reactions, uh, the enzyme name is kinase. That means the pyruvate kinase. Okay. Okay, now the net reaction of glycolysis. Uh, during the conversion of glucose to pyruvate, two molecules of ATP are produced. Uh, at the very beginning, we have to use uh, um, two molecules, two uh, ATP, and uh, finally, uh, we get four molecules of ATP. That means uh, the net ATP production is two molecules of ATP, and we have also found two molecules of NAD+, uh, which is uh, reduced to NADH. Um, so this is the net reaction of glycolysis and then what happens with the pyruvate uh, so um, through glycolysis one molecule of glucose it produces two molecules of pyruvate and then what happens uh, there are three um, types of reactions can occur here um, in the aerobic conditions uh, oxidation uh, pyruvate uh, oxidized um, to acetyl CoA and then this acetyl CoA enters into the citric acid cycle for further oxidation. Okay, and uh, in anaerobic conditions uh, like in our muscles, in red blood cells, and uh, this type of conversion occurs. That means the pyruvate it uh, converted into lactate or lactic acid okay and the another in another anaerobic anaerobic conditions uh, like in microorganisms or in yeast pyruvate it um, converted into ethanol okay so let's talk about the first anaerobic condition metabolism of pyruvate to ethanol okay ethanol is formed from pyruvate in yeast and several uh, other microorganisms in anaerobic conditions okay so the actually uh, so the conversion of uh, pyruvate to ethanol it re uh, requires two steps in the first step uh, the decarboxylation of pyruvate uh, occurs and that means the pyruvate um, uh, after decarboxylation of pyruvate it turns into acetaldehyde see here the carbon dioxide uh, is replaced by a proton decarboxyl um, decarboxylase enzyme it catalyzes this reaction decarboxylation means d means remove carboxy means carbon and oxygen that means carbon dioxide so when uh, carbon dioxide molecule is removed from a substrate and the process is called decarboxylation and that's why the and name of the enzyme is decarboxylase okay and then this acetaldehyde in the second step it is reduced to ethanol okay uh, and uh, here the nadh h plus it turns into nad plus because one uh, because the proton of the nadh plus h plus uh, is transferred to the acetaldehyde then it becomes ethanol okay and the enzyme name is alcohol dehydrogenase okay so another now see here the another um, pyruvate fate uh, during the uh, anaerobic condition and this is the pyruvate uh, converts into the lactate or lactic acid okay lactate is formed from pyruvate in an animal organism and in a variety of microorganism in anaerobic conditions okay the conversion of glucose into lactate is also called the lactic acid fermentation and this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase okay you had the uh, um, 
NADH plus H plus it converts into NAD mm, plus and the pyruvate converts into lactate. Do you know that re this reaction it can take place in our muscle cell when uh, we do rigorous exercise suddenly it creates a oxygen free situation inside the cell so in the absence of oxygen pyruvate it turns into lactate okay so now okay let's talk about the mm, the most important topic or most important uh, fate of the pyruvate which is called the metabolism of pyruvate to acetyl coa this is the common phenomenon because this is in uh, this uh, reaction this uh, thing happens here uh, in the aerobic conditions that means the most common scenario so in aerobic condition pyruvate is converted to acetyl coenzyme a that means acetyl coa acetyl coa then it enters nitric acid cycle so the pyruvate it converts into acetyl coa then this acetyl coa it enters into the citric acid cycle um, where it degrades to carbon dioxide and water and then energy released during oxidation and which is utilized in NADH and FADH2. Um, uh, in our next lectures, we'll talk about this uh, all these oxidation reactions. We'll talk about okay, so don't worry. And the pyruvate is converted to acetyl CoA and this reaction that means this pyruvate to acetyl CoA conversion uh, is uh, took place in the is, is take place in the matrix of mitochondria. Okay, so uh, listen carefully. Uh, the conversion of glucose to pyruvate take place in cytoplasm. Then this pyruvate enters into the matrix of the mitochondria and where it converts pyruvate to acetyl CoA. Okay, so the overall reaction is here, and this is a actually. Uh, here is a, this is a simple reaction, a simplified reaction actually, because it has four steps and it has three enzymes and five coenzymes. And all these five, uh, all these three enzymes and five coenzymes together, you can call it the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. See here the pyruvate mm, the, uh, converted into acetyl CoA by the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, where the CoA group it replaces the carbon dioxide of the pyruvate and Another thing is hydrogen also removed uh, and which is uh, transferred to the NAD uh, with NAD plus then it becomes NADH2 that means it reduced to NA NAD plus reduced to NADH plus and as a result um, a pyruvate converts into a acetyl CoA okay so the another thing uh, is the regulation of glycolysis you know uh, the rate of the glycolysis is also regulated in our body in our cell to meet to measure cellular needs actually the production of atp and another one is the provision of building blocks for synthetic reactions okay when our cell uh, needs more atp it uh, accelerate the glycolysis reaction to produce more atp okay when it needs to uh, reduce the number of ATP, then it uh, then it uh, slow down the glycolysis reaction. Okay, so there are three control sites in glycolysis: the reactions catalyzed by hexokinase, phosphofructokinase, and pyruvate kinase. That means the three irreversible reaction um, in the glycolysis uh, can be the controlling point, and all this uh, in uh, in this point. Uh, the glycolysis can be regulated by three ways by the reversible binding of allosteric effectors and the covalent modification or uh, by the regulation of transcription okay mm -hmm. okay now let's uh, see a sample cq question mm, here here is a stem Mm, all living organisms require considerable amount of energy for their vital activities. Mainly, energy is gained from the food through a complex and long process called respiration. Aerobic and anaerobic organisms produce energy through cellular respiration. So, from this stem, you have to answer four questions um, A, B, C, and D, and the mark is respectively one, two, three, and four. The first question is what is respiration? And so in this question, you have to answer the definition of respiration. And the second one is write down the chemical reaction of respiration. Um, so um, I think um, you will uh, get the answer from the uh, very beginning of the lecture. And now uh, write down, you have to write down the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. And the third one, fourth one, uh, the fourth question is describe the cellular respiration step which is common for both aerobic and anaerobic organisms. 
So which one actually? So that means you have to describe the cellular respiration step which is common for both aerobic and anaerobic organisms. Which one? That means the glycolysis. Glycolysis is the common cellular respiration step for both aerobic and anaerobic organisms. Okay. So I think that's all for today. Thank you all.